I have a few things I, I really need to do. So let me do this tonight, real quick, with all of you. It's gonna be a short one. I no go draw too. I no go draw I'm too long. I no go yap. No yap. It's just straight knowledge. Straight knowledge. You know, if you are a, uh, if you are a follower of this, if you are a follower of my page, and you know, you know about this book. I tell you about this book a lot. The West and the rest of us. White predators, black slavers, and the African elites. White predators, black slavers, and the African elites. There's no time, there's no real Pan Africanist in this world. There's no real historian in this world that will say that some Africans were not complicit. The word to use is complicit in the slave trade. You cannot say that some Africans were. Africans were complicit. They had a hand in it. Without those Africans, it would have never been successful. If I did swear for an elite, and I go say Sheun, Sheun is too elite, and I will show you who they are. I will read a letter here to prove to you who the African elites are, the kind of spirit they have, and what drives them. Real quick, I'll give you some legal psychology into the kind of people that they are. See, this way I cannot respect them. Just to give us good internet, we are paying massive money for this internet compared to the minimum wage of Nigeria, which is 30,000. These people charge for some internet bundles in Nigeria. In fact, to have unlimited Wi Fi in my house is like what 45,000, 50,000 a month. Minimum wage is 30,000 in this country. These people charge 50,000 for unlimited internet, more than almost double almost double of the minimum wage yes they cannot even give us something that is working well are these human beings you know now real quick about the dynamism of slavery real quick about the dynamism of slavery you see if two people are in a room let's say you and me you and i are in a room together Hmm? And you are more powerful than me. You have, you are stronger than me. You have more tech, more, uh, how would I say, more resources for yourself than me. So you are more powerful. You see, whatever happens in that room that the two of us are is your fault. I repeat, if two people are in a room and one is more powerful than the other in all aspects of economics, strengths, resources, organization. Hmm? Anything that happens is your fault. Or anything that happens that is good is also your glory. You feel me? Like, say, I feel beat you now. Say, me, me and you, they, I feel beat you. We meet. Now, how I want to make you behave, you must behave. What happens in that relationship is the fault of the powerful. You see, the powerful determines the relationship. The powerful one between the two determines the relationship. If I'm more powerful than you, I determine the relationship. You understand? If I want you to develop like me, to become successful and rich and strong and powerful like me, I will treat you in a benevolent manner. I will treat you in a benevolent manner. You see, the way I will treat you will make you feel confident to train, to rise, to, you know. But if I decide to oppress you also and break your spirit and make you feel less of yourself, I can also do that by slapping you, beating you, whipping you, flogging you, punching you anytime I like. You see, if I do those things, you will never be anything because I decide. It is I. So when, that's why when that he, you know, I don't know, he who must not be named. Many people that follow me know I, there's a person in this world that we black people should never mention his name again. We should never mention his name again. He says slavery is a choice. But slavery is not a choice. Slavery is a decision of the powerful. If slavery will exist, the powerful decides that slavery will exist. Because the powerful is the one that will subjugate the enslaved. 
without the powerful deciding to subjugate and oppress and exploit the powerless, they can never be slavery because the powerless will never go and say, I want to be a slave, enslave me by force. Let me carry the, the powerful, the powerless will not do that. You understand? So that being said, and us knowing this, let's move forward. Let's move forward. I'm going to read for you from Mark Twain. I don't know if you know who Mark Twain is. Mark Twain is one of the most prolific writers in, 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 or, or in European history. He is one of the uh, uh, most prolific writers. You know, he's a, he's a legend of the written word for them. So he said, in many countries, we have chained the savage and stabbed him to death. In many countries, we have burned the savage at the stake. We have hunted the savage and his little children and their mother with dogs and guns. In many countries, we have taken the savage's land from him and made him our slave and made him our slave and lashed him every day and broken his pride and made death his only friend and overworked him till he dropped in his tracks. Complaining, he said, in many countries, we have chained the savage. Not that we met the savage chained. They didn't come and meet the savage chained. They chained the savage, okay? And starved him to death. They didn't meet him hungry. They decided to starve him to death. Mm -hmm. In many countries, we have burned the savage at the stake. We have hunted the savage and his little children and their mother with dogs and guns. In many countries, we have taken the savage's land from him and made him our slave and lashed him every day and broken his pride and made death his only friend and overworked him till he dropped in his tracks. Now, who does this? You know, many people say, oh, Europeans... Uh, they, they, they do what they did because of their weather. Their weather is so cold that if you don't act, you, if you don't do things drastically, if you don't, if you don't, the weather is made them, it's why they are so innovative. It's why they have to go everywhere and steal other people's things. The weather. First of all, Europeans are from Europe, right? Is Europe the only place with cold weather? that had indigenous people? Is Europe the only place? Japan and China hmm? also gets cold winter with snow and everything. Why didn't the Chinese go around the world uh, colonizing, enslaving everybody around the world, all over the world? The America that they went to steal, hmm? the America, this America you all want to die to go to, this stolen land. Hmm? Is there no winter there some of the harshest winters in this world are experienced by the Inuit people of Alaska. Go to Alaska. The Inuit people of Alaska. Hmm? Nowhere is colder than that place. Why didn't the Native Americans, why didn't the Natives go around killing and maiming and colonizing and all the rubbish that was going on? Read Michael Bra uh, Bradley's uh, Caveman Inheritance. Go and read all those books. You know, enlighten yourself about who you are talking to, talking about, right? Before you start giving unnecessary excuses. Now we'll talk about the slave trade. You know, African kings sold everybody. Africa, did African kings want to sell their, their own children too? Did African kings want to sell their own children too as, to slave, as slaves? Hmm? Do you know that African princes were taken as slaves to Europe and to, uh, to, America, to the Americas, to the Caribbeans? Do you know that the children of kings, one of the reasons why we have tribal marks, do you know where tribal marks came from in Africa? Do you know why Africans started marking their face? Do you think we used to mark our face from day one? When these stupid chiefs and kings eh, started doing business with the Oibo, Oibo was carrying their children too. They would just see that. So to now mark their children, Separate from the children of the commoners so that they can continue making money. You know, you people like to worship everybody that likes to make money. 
I will read a letter to you here to let you know that you still making money. It doesn't make sense. Anybody today in this country that is selling your common wealth to Europeans, hmm? that is selling your common wealth, the things that we all own, from our cement to our oil to our land to our where they grow all these cash crops for them, all these um, uh, robber people that sell rubber to them, anybody that is using our common wealth in this country to do business with white people and Europeans and this, and keeping the money like as if it is only their own, hiding it in their pocket, spending it for them and their children, those are the new slave traders. But you don't understand what slavery, slavery is. Those are the new slave traders. They are selling you, but you don't know how it's you they are selling because they are selling what makes you your essence. The things that you should use to live a dignified life. They are keeping you away from me so that only them and their children can live dignified lives. Okay? So let me tell you, let me break it down. So this king started to mark, mark all their children. After a while, mark or no mark, or he both started to carry everybody. So by the time this black slavers and African elites, by the time they were trying to get wise, it was too late. They were not powerful enough. But they, hmm? they were not powerful enough to defend their sovereignty. Hmm? They were not powerful enough anymore to defend their sovereignty. So that was the first time. You see, there's class consciousness. You have to be class conscious. It's in this period for the first time. The elites of Africa and the people of Africa united. We started fighting the slavers, fighting against the slave trade, serious fighting mm -hmm. against them all over the place. You know, give them rest. That's how you are free today. The second time the elites of Africa ever united with their people was also to fight Europeans for colonialism. Because after slavery, this Mumu people now started signing protectionism, protection. They have because they said, well, no, let's protect you against the slavers. Let's protect. They, said, they signed protection. We go come that protection means we are your guy. Took their power. Hmm? Until the anti colonial struggle started. And these elites and black slavers realized that if they unite with their people again, they can wrestle some of the power. That the Europeans have stolen from them. They can wrestle some of the power back. They united with us for independence. Wrestle some power that they are enjoying by themselves. Forgetting that we are the ones that fought for that power to come to them. Forgetting their past. So you have to understand that these African elites, they are not you. They are not us. They are not of us. They are not part of They are not us. These are the Europeans among us. These are the Europeans. People that are willing to kill other African people for European interests. Mm -hmm. These are the Europeans among us. And they are in a minority. But they've bamboozled you. Your problem is that they've made you feel that what they have is what you need. They've made you feel that what these traitors have, what they have cornered, money, because that's all they have, access to wealth, because they've sold their life for it. They don't have power. The power is with their masters in Europe and America. So all they have is money. And they've made you feel as if money is everything. So you must bow to them because they have it. They have the money. So when it's money that is controlling your brain, you can never see them for the true evil snakes that they are, for the evil bastards that they are. You understand? For the traitors that they are. Intergen intergenerational traitors. You understand what I'm telling you? Intergenerational traitors. Let me start. What does it mean to abolish the slave trade? What does it mean to abolish the slave trade? So if I'm a king and you are my visitor and you are doing slavery in my land and I say to you, Oga, we don't want slavery in this land anymore. Have I abolished slave trade or not? If I am the king of this place and you are my visitor and you come to my land and you are doing slavery and me, the king, I tell you, my visitor, please stop this thing. We don't want it. Have I or have I not abolished slavery? If I, as the king, 
put a law in my land that no more slavery in this land. What does that mean? Does that mean I have abolished slavery or not? That yes. So let me tell you, Africans from as early as the 16th century started abolishing slavery all over this continent. No African kingdom allowed it. Europeans had to now come and break the, uh, break the law. They were breaking the law. The law, you know, I will read it to you. See, this is not uh, the say they say. This is the first land that the Europeans encountered in Africa was the Bukongo, the Bukongo people in where, where what is known today as Angola. Hmm? So the king, this king became a Christian, everything. He was happy with his white friends, but they, he was, this, his town had more churches than Lisbon. He built more churches in Bukongo than he had in Portugal. They were calling his, town, uh, his, his city the city of churches. That's how much this, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 he changed his name to Alfonso. His real name was, um, uh, oh shit. Wow. Okay. I didn't want to go back to know his name. I like to remember these things, but I have to go and look at Expo to remember his name. I know this. I just use Expo. In Zinga a Unkuhu. In Zinga a Unkuhu. That is his traditional name. When you see Christian gold, all those level, you know, he quickly say, I want to be a Christian. And also, many African um, kings were happy to be Christians. Why? Because then they had the power to appoint the new priests. The priests will come from Uyibo land, will be their friend. They wanted to sub subvert their spiritual system. Because they could not impose, African kings could not impose their will on African gods. So African kings were willing to become Christians so they could say, I don't want to listen to this God anymore. I'm a Christian now. You understand this? They are, they are low mentalities. See, kings must not, nothing like there is no such thing as a good king. I'm telling you. You know why? Because no matter how good a king is, even if you've had 100,000 good kings back to back to back, 100,000, all the kings you've had, back to back to back to back to back, are good kings. All it takes is one stupid king. One stupid king and all the work that those 100,000 kings, you will destroy it in his lifetime. You will destroy it in his lifetime. That's why we don't want kings. That's why we don't want kings. That's why Igbo people did not even allow, some Africans did not even allow anybody to be king in their side. Let everybody decide. We want everybody to decide. And many African traditions were like that. Even uh, the uh, Alafi of Oyo had the Oyo Messi. He couldn't make any decision without the Oyo Messi agreeing. Those are the checks and balances. Any children of, oh, take our child and go and educate in your ways though, so that our relationship can be stronger. Even those children, we never saw them again. Did we sell those ones too? Did we sell those ones as well? Did the king want to sell his own children? No, but amongst us were the vassals, the merchants of Africa that were mesmerized by European things. They can't do without Gucci. They can't do without Louis Vuitton. That in those days, there was no Gucci, but you know, silk, a big boy. They can't do without wine. They can't do without whiskey. And you Portuguese say, before we give you all these things, we need slaves. Ah, but our king, our king said that no more, we can't say slave again. Your king, who be your king? You defeat him. Ah, we're afraid. Oh, he has warriors. He will, he will cut off our head. He will, eh, is that why? Oh yeah, give them warriors. So maybe three black men with 500 white men behind them who start to do what they like all over the place. Killing and stealing and taking things that they like. But yet, these they are bastards that they've planted amongst us. You know, that they have bribed all these people that they've bribed with money. Go and look at all they've given them something small to chop. Or the ones that are looking up to the ones that are behaving like that. Will not African say that African 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 say African African. Which sheep 
did we use to go and call them to come and buy slave? Please tell me, which ship did Africans send to Europe to announce to them that, ah, we have slaves for sale, oh, who wants to buy slave? Come and buy slave, come and buy slave. Hmm? Tell me. When did we go and call them? So these lies are getting too much. You know? So tell me how we... So, so these people... And I'm telling all of you, I've been saying this, my voice, I'm almost losing my voice repeating this to you. There are some Africans among us who cannot do without European things. Who believe that the reason to, uh, the reason to exist is to amass as much European things as possible. That's why they are alive. They, go and look at them. From all the rich men in Nigeria that you look up to, everybody, Dangote New, Otedola New, eh, Mederi Benio, anybody, name in name, Dan Tata, Dan, Dan Boise, eh, Tinubu, name anyone. They have nothing great that they have achieved. So they've not even written. These are leaders of nations, so-called leaders of industry. They never write one book before. There's nothing that they've created. They create nothing. They build nothing. These people are consumers, mesmerized by consumption of European things. To them, the more European things you have, the more successful you are. To them, success cannot be removed from whiteness. To these people, success is whiteness. In fact, for them, to be successful means that you can access whiteness. If you, even if you have 10 billion, hmm? To this, even if you, you don't make 10 billion dollars for your life, if you don't know what real Gucci is, if you don't know what real Louis Vuitton is, if you don't drive the biggest best, but in your account you have, these people will not respect you. They will say you'll be money misroad. Because they don't understand success without whiteness. Do you feel me? Even if you are successful, as long as you don't consume whiteness, they will be insulting you. They will say you be you be money misrude, you be bushman, you be this, you be that. So you have to understand this. These are the people that you see what you see the letter where I read to you. You see what happened after that. I'll give you more examples. In fifteen hundred. The Benin Empire. This our brothers here. The Benin Empire. Slavery was abolished from immediately encountered Europeans. They say no slavery here. If you try it, we kill you. What did the Europeans do in Benin? They instigated a civil war and brought a king that was willing to sell slave with them. They brought him to power in Benin. And that's how slavery was uh, uh, re-enacted in Benin. I believe that one too is a lie. You people don't know the story of uh, Seoge and his uh, cousin that he were fighting civil war. Was that, and that was his name, the one that won. I'm tired. I can't remember his name. I'm tired, I'm tired. He's late. Anyway, as I said, I don't want it to be too long. But the same thing happened all over and over. And no African king could break this yoke. No African king could break it. No, we couldn't. Because why? Europeans were willing to arm the next man that was agreeing. You feel me? Anybody that agrees to sell slaves, they will give you all the guns you need. So now you will be in a position. Now you will be in a position. It's either you sell slave or you become slave yourself. It's either you sell slave or you become slave yourself. Now many of these people here will be saying, hey, if not me, if not me, never. I don't agree. If not me. <laughs> this same person, now, now, now. What is he doing? If not him, now. Okay, now. Now. What? If now you, can you slap police? You don't slap army before. 
If not me, I will never a story. You can never know except you are in that position. You can never know because why? You are in that position. So, another argument I've heard this past few weeks is how the British, is it our, the British, say they used their navy, it was their navy that ended, their navy was patrolling the sea, their navy was patrolling the, the sea, the, the stuff. As I've shown you, European merchants know the year what? What did I say? European merchants who have now become European multinationals. In those days, they were one man. They were a merchant. But now those merchants have amassed so much wealth that they have become what we now know as multinational corporations. That's what they are. And they know the hear word. They don't care about anything. Look at the way they've destroyed the environment of this earth. And not only in Niger Delta in Nigeria. Look all over the world what these multinational corporations have done. Now, earth is our only home. Do you want to see the way? You see how these people think? Earth is the only home of man. We have nowhere else to go. If they destroy this earth, we are all finished. Including them, who, including them, they are finished too. Has it stopped them from destroying it? Has it stopped them from polluting it? Has it? Never. Not once. Not. They are. In fact, they are polluting. They are polluting more. They are destroying more. Look at their, uh, their boy boy in Nigeria. Look at this Lagos state government, for example. Every year, flood is increasing in Lagos. Every year, they are sand filling the lagoon, sand filling any river. Is it not madness? You can see that we are drowning underwater. The space that the water will use to leave our city, you are sand filling it, making us more choked, landlocked. Are these the people that you think Europeans knew that they are merchants? They don't hear word. So when they now decided to abolish slavery, when Europeans decided to abolish slavery in 1807, we have abolished it since 1526. African kingdoms had abolished slavery 1526. We've told them we are not doing it again. From the moment we encountered these people and they started this their behavior. We realized that it was bad. And we said no. But they forced by force, they were doing it. Hmm? By force, these people were doing it. By force, they were killing people. By force, they were raping people. By force, they were maiming people. By force, they were kidnapping people. So when they now decided, 300 years later, to stop their merchants. Let me tell you, when they decided this decision, as I said, they did not stop because of the goodness of their hearts. They stopped because we gave them hell. Africans had realized that the only way to save ourselves is to save our fucking selves. And we saved ourselves. Bro, we, whoa, we showed them Pepe. As I said before, the same way they will come and lie that they, they, Joe, Biden, Joe Biden left in Afghanistan. Obama left Iraq. No. The Afghanis and the Iraqis kick their ass out. Exactly. That's what happened. Nobody, they know they leave. You must kick them out. Me. They are naval ships. They had understood that this old form of slavery, Africans will not take it anymore. That we will not take this form of slavery where they are beating us, maiming us, raping us, raping our women in our presence, killing our children in our presence, lashing us like animals, cutting off the hands of our children if we refuse to walk. Do you know that, that that's how Africans started working? Africans do not know the meaning of work. Africans never work for anybody. In pre-slavery, Pre-colonial Africa, no African man knew the meaning of work. What does it mean to work for somebody? That you are working for somebody. What does that mean? That you are in this world to be going to work every day. Africans didn't have that. We didn't know what it was. Do you know how they made Africans start working? 
Because when they come and say, come and walk, we say, get out, walk for you for wait. Come and catch me to walk now. You have to be I'm catching people to walk. So what they started doing, they will come to our villages, come to our towns, and they will kidnap all your women and children. Or the ones who they feel catch. So anybody wearing wife and in Peking, they don't capture them. To free your wife and your child, you must go and walk. You must go and walk. That's how we understood walk. Work for us was also a form of subjugation. And those that refused still, you know what they did? They would cut the hand of your child. They will cut the hand of your child in your presence. You don't want to walk, Abi. Okay. Whap. They will cut the hand of your child. This is what we were going through. This is what we had to stop. We had to stop that. We fought with everything. This was over 484 documented. This is the one. So if they are documented, if white people by themselves documented 484 anti-slave rebellions and wars in Africa, not in the world, though. I don't want to add Antigua, Guadeloupe, Jamaica, uh, St. Vincent, uh, Haiti. I don't want to add all those places. Just here in the motherland. Over 484. We fought them for centuries. It was. So when they started sending these their ships, they understood that this slavery was over. They couldn't keep it up. And not only couldn't they keep it up, not only were they losing in Africa drastically hmm? they were losing in the caribbeans as well and if they were carrying more slaves if they were carrying more slaves to the caribbean it means that they were just carrying more warriors to the war so they understood the politicians understood that that thing had to stop but the merchants the merchants the predators the merchants the multinational corporations Barclays, Lloyds, uh, Bridgestone, Ford, these companies, they were one man before. These white predators, they are now these white multinationals. They know the year word, sir. Their government knew that they will still be carrying slaves. And that slave that they are carrying will be putting them in jeopardy. Because after the Caribbeans, guess where the Africans would have gone to take next? The Americas. Uh -uh. <laughs> Unilever, thank you. Exxon Mobil, UAC. All these companies all over Africa. CFAO. All these companies. These merchants. The predators, fam. Anyway, so let me give you some interesting stories of how we kick their ass on land, and then they will think well, after they successfully kidnap some Africans, we kick their ass on the sea. I'll give you a story of two boats real quickly. Now, not only the African people, while we were in the chain also, our ancestors, they're bad. Bad boys. Those are the real bad boys. <laughs> chain them, they look at they break the chain, she everybody carry the boat, drive her back to Africa. Una they mad me. Do you know how many times that happened? Do you know how many times they were now that nobody could ride the boat? Instead of anything, they, everybody died there. They drowned the boat, everybody drowned. That's the beginning of insurance. Or oh, it was like taking insurance. <laughs> because it was there is no insurance if something is not risky. It became a risky endeavor. It became a risky endeavor. Hmm? It became a risky endeavor. You feel me? <coughs> we were dealing with them. But I want to give you this interesting one that is in this, uh, uh, my friend's uh, uh, book here. Yes. Give me a second. Let me just find the page. 
Uh -huh. Got it. Now, if you go and read the book called Breaking the Silence, recorded 382 revolts, 182. Mm -hmm. So now, this name of this ship was called the Middleburg. I want you to remember the name. In 1751. On a similar note, in 1765, a human trafficking, before I get to the one that we actually, uh, uh, let me talk about the one we commanded back. In 1765, a human trafficking ship called the Sally arrived on the island of Antigua in the Caribbean. The kidnappers described a revolt that had taken place on board their vessel just four hours after leaving Calabar in Nigeria. Just four hours after leaving Calabar, we scatter everything. <laughs> a number of African freedom fighters were said to be vomiting as a result of seasickness. They had been allowed on deck to be tended to by their healthier sisters and brothers. The African freedom fighters then seized the opportunity and managed to free their entire group. This was followed by an intense battle with the kidnappers, which resulted in 80 African warriors being forced overboard to their deaths. On another occasion, African freedom fighters on board the Vigilante in 1780 overpowered the kidnappers and took control of the vessel. Rather than kill the kidnappers, as often happened in these situations, we were killing them gone, you know, I'm telling you, this is the reason why they had to stop it. The dead bodies coming back was, was too much. Ah, 40 years, 100 years law, tell me about that. Because I'm not here. You know? <laughs> Took control of the vessel. Rather than kill the kidnappers, as often happened in these situations, they were humane enough to, to allow the kidnappers to live in the vessel's lifeboats. However, the African freedom fighters were eventually intercepted and captured by a British warship. A similar story emerged in 1795, where in the course of defending African liberty, kidnapped African freedom fighters killed three most senior kidnappers, the captain, first and second mate, on the human trafficking ship called the Brig Rachel, Leech of Boston. Okay, now let me tell you about the one we collect and drove back. African people kidnapped and held in bondage of, on the Atlantic crossing did not sit idly by waiting to be transported into oblivion. On many occasions, they commandeered their floating prison in determined bids to liberate themselves from their obscenely cruel bondage. Despite having all the odds stacked against them, being held in chains for up to a year, and attempting to survive in spaces providing them with less room than a man in a coffin, African prisoners of war bravely rose up to the challenge and sometimes even subdued their evil oppressors. They proved time and time again that they were brave enough to rise up in militant fashion to take their freedom. According to one historian, a total of 382 revolts have been recorded. These revolts happened in spite of the fact that most human trafficking ships were floating armories equipped with pistols, muskets, cutlasses, cannon, and around-the-clock guards. The courageous African prisoners of war who rose up to seize control of the floating prisons and varying degrees of success. It may come as a surprise to some, but many prison vessels were commandeered by courageous kidnapped African freedom fighters in their bid to liberate themselves from their obscenely cruel bondage. The uprisings had varying degrees of success. In some cases, such as the Roberts in 1721, they did not manage to gain control of the vessel. In others, they gained control, but were eventually overpowered by imperialist warships. This same warship that they are saying was arresting later this was uh, 1797 so this same warship that is arresting slaves hmm, that were freeing themselves now suddenly nine years later was going after slave ships uh, for his own reason listen anyway i'll get to that point let me know i i said this so i don't want to spoil the point i want to use to close this live so 
in order as they gained control but were eventually overpowered by imperialist warships and sold into slavery as happened with the thomas in 1797 others such as the neptunius in 1795 were blown out of the water by a british warship as he attempted to return to africa you see after we had called it, they will still come they will, will come blow all the slaves kill all uh, all these our in fact we are not slaves let's stop saying those words our ancestors they were freedom fighters prisoners of war being captured to foreign lands to suffer to their death for standing up for their people that's how we must always see our ancestors we were blown out of the water by a british warship as it attempted to return to africa or they were released after court cases as was the fate of Sengape and the other africans who overpowered the crew on the amistad in 1839 I mean, you know about the Amistad. You, everybody has watched, give us free. <laughs> they still find a way to insult us. It's our victorious story, you know. And, and as you can tell by the story of the Amistad, which happened in 1839, that if the British had truly been patrolling the waters, how did slaves get to America in 1839 when the British had outlawed slavery in 1906 and were so-called patrolling the high sea looking for slaves? Slaves stopped leaving Africa when slavery stopped in America due to Africans there fighting in that civil war to subdue the slaving South. We, the Africans in America, fought for that slavery to end there. Nobody gave us anything that we did not fight for ourselves. Don't let anybody deceive you and tell you nonsense. You understand me? We fought for everything we ever got by ourselves. Nobody gave us nothing. Nobody helped us do anything. Anything they did was for themselves and in their pockets. Had nothing to do with Africans. Had nothing. How was slaves still getting to America in 1839 if uh, the British stopped the slavery with their warships? And when were, those warships were just were sent out to do their fake job of uh, we are patrolling the sea to slave slavery. Yeah. But their real job was to come and colonize Africa. I'm going to get to that to end this, you know. In other cases, such as the Marlboro. That's why maybe that's why I smoke Marlboro Gold. I don't even know. I smoke, you know, I, I don't smoke cigarettes. But when I want to, uh, uh, hey, my people, good news, though. Well, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. But I've not been smoking. Sometimes I'm smoking. Sometimes I'm not smoking. I don't even, like right now, now I've not smoked today. Not one joint. I've not smoked one joint today. Can you believe that? <laughs> Things are changing in this world. But Marlboro, eventually, in, the, in such as the Marlboro in 1752, they eventually returned the ship back to Africa. There are many cases of African people uprising. In 26th of March 1789, on board of the Felicity, another ship. I said we deal with them. African freedom fighters managed to get hold of the firearms and axe, a cutlass, and other weapons. They released some of the other African freedom fighters and attempted to take over the vessel. They managed to kill the chief kidnapper and some members of his pirate crew with a loss of two of their own lives. A further three African freedom fighters were killed in the battle before they were subdued and forced below deck. This was a brave but unsuccessful attempt to take over the floating prison and free themselves. Another example came in 1722. Listen, example upon example upon example upon example upon example of how we made the, how we stopped the fucking trade. Okay? Example upon example upon example. You feel me? Don't let anybody come and tell you about any stupid Wilbur force. Now they're saying uh, Africa or you both boats in call where they patrol the sea. These same boats that were freeing slaves hmm, came to Africa to impose colonialism in the name of protectionism. Because many people don't understand that that's how colonialism started in Africa, in the name of protecting us against slaves. And Africans, after centuries of the anti-slave war, of the anti-slave rebellion and battles, we were tired. After centuries, 100 to 300 years of this complete tragedy on, on us, where Africans could not sleep. At, you, couldn't, you can't sleep with your two eyes closed for over... Imagine not being able to sleep for like 400 years. 
Just imagine, you don't know what your ancestors went through. To buy all gold, last to buy all sunju. Only genie no boat. What genie bad agree? Huh? What? Hey! <laughs> so we were happy. Okay, let's come. To this this so-called protectionism. It, it was a treaty. It was a treaty. Many of them still. If you read it, this is a treaty. Sometimes, it was peace agreement. Okay, we will we will sign this agreement. We will not still we will not be doing this business again. That's what many African kings thought they were signing. Let's also not forget alcohol. Africans did not have strong alcohol. Go and read the history of China. That's why China does not play with the West. That's why they, China did their job in the sixties and in the fifties with Chama Mao after the Second World War. We instead of China completely decolonized after the Second World War. They fought the civil war to kick out the European Chinese. If you hear of Taiwan today, Taiwan is where all the European Chinese ran to. That's why America like Taiwan, Taiwan and they are protecting Taiwan. Those are their people. Those are their Chinese. Those are the Chinese that were behaving like Obasanjo. The Chinese that were behaving like Buhari to their own people. Before Chairman Mao rose up and destroyed all of them, they had to run to another place. We have not done that. All these people that are talking about how we Africans are the prey of Africa. If you, they are not organizing to do that, we that we are organizing to take power from these people, we don't see them at our meetings. We don't see them behind us. But they are in these people's houses every day. But they still come and tell you how it is Africans that are the problem of Africa. These Europeans know how to make the elites drug addicts. Look at Nigeria now. All these elites are drug addicts. All their children are drug addicts. It's the same thing they did in China. In fact, when the Chinese people realized what they were doing, the Chinese emperor banned opium, which is heroin. He banned heroin in China. The Europeans fought two wars in 18, 18, 1860 and 1890, I think, against the Chinese to make heroin legal in China, to make, force the Chinese people to be taking heroin. Now it's the same Europeans that will be telling you they are fighting war on drugs. And be telling you that uh, the, worst, the heroin is coming from Asia. The heroin is coming from Asia. These Asians are the ones sending heroin. Not that they're the ones that are forced heroin on those people. That's the same way they forced alcohol on the African elites. On the African merchants. You see, these African elites, and they, we did not have strong alcohol like whiskey and brandy that they used to drink. We had emu, guru, all those things. But you know, strong. So many of these men were even signing without reading because they were drunk. Or people go first give them shayo. They go, they happy mood. They don't go know what they sign. Anyway, protectionism became colonialism. So now tell me, how can a ship that is saying is patrolling to stop slavery come to Africa and start another kind of slavery? Tell me, how, how, how does that make sense? That Europeans, uh, the British Navy, was fighting to stop slave, slave trade on the sea. Hmm? But on land, they were imposing new slavery on the people. Abi, you don't know what happened? But we should be thanking those British ships <laughs> for stopping slavery. Anybody that says that is a bastard son of Africa. Is a traitor of Africa. The blood of traitor is running in that. Nobody without blood of traitor, without treacherous blood in their body, can utter that kind of statement. You feel me? Except you are a treacherous son of Africa or daughter, you can never make such a statement. And the same ships that came to impose colonialism on Africans were stopping slavery on the high sea while imposing new slavery. No, these people knew that their merchants know the hear word. They will weaken their new industrialization plan. So stop our merchants. Finish. That's what they were doing. They were not stopping slavery. They were stopping European merchants from kidnapping people. Because we had stopped slavery by ourselves already. But they had a new thing for us. We didn't know. 
And that's why we Africans, this time, this time you have to be ready to do your complete work. You have to be ready to finish your work. Finish your work. You have to be ready. Because nobody's going to do this job for you. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to think about you, Seth. They all want you to be subservient. They want you to be exploited. So they can continue to drive Rolls Royce. The black predators and African elites. Look at, they are here. See, white predators, black slavers. And the African elite, there's no Pan-African with any brain in his cell, that will, in, his, in his head, that will tell you that only Europeans did it. No, we knew they were Africans that were complicit. And we are telling you about them every day. Who do you think Fela was singing about in Africa every day? Like, oh, Basonjo, Hanabi, Ola. When, when Fela is shouting every day, all these people, fight, what do you think? who do you think he's fighting against? Who do you think he was fighting against? But you people continue to support these people. Once they throw some money, all of your celebrities that are doing show, they want to sell 10 million Naira table in a country where minimum wage is 30,000. Why can they tell you the truth? Why would they be happy to believe that you are a slave, that you are, you are the one that did it to yourself? People that say that thing, say it because they want us to believe that we deserve where we are today. That their own enjoyment is because they are more special than us. All these African elites and the black slavers and their fathers, they just, you see, they just want you to believe that you deserve what is going on. That you brought it upon yourself. Hmm? Instead of the truth, that it is because of their negligence. It is because of their sabotage. It is because of their treachery. We are where we are today. And if we don't, let me tell you something. If we as African people, those of us with some means... Those of us that have been able to find these small comforts that we have within this oppressive system, if we don't come together and organize ourselves to give our people the platform and the program that will release them from this bondage of these wicked African elites, I guarantee you hmm, that, you see, when it go happen, these African elites, they go run again. They will run. You see the way the Chinese elites ran to Taiwan to create Taiwan. Elites have money. They will always run. They will run. To, they will have their own Taiwan. They will create their own little Taiwan. They will run. It is you and I that will pay for it. When the poor people of this country, when the disenfranchised people of this country, when they stand up, the day they stand up, you know, you'll be shouting, not be me, I just they work for bank. I just they do this. I just be my own. I'm a self-employed guy. I'm self I just they also. They will ask you one question and one question only. When our children were dying, did you ever strike? Because today, all we have to do in this country to start change is for all the workers in this country to unite in a strike, to unite in a boycott of service to these people that are destroying us, that cannot even give us working internet and charge us double of minimum wage for it. Yet you go to work every day. You continue to strengthen them. You continue to worship them. You continue to praise them. Journalists, you go write your own. Singer, you go sing your own. Banker, you go bank your own. Architect, you go build your own. Construction, you go construct your own. Demolisher, you go demolish poor people's house for them. You go collect your own money. We are all collect civil service. Civil service, they civil service in own. Don't worry. Keep the ball rolling. But one day that ball go jam wall. You go come bounce back. Uh -huh. And that did not go no say. Now they're going to go, no say, <laughs> Kaki is not leather. I'm telling you people, I'm telling you people, you must let the poor people of Nigeria today know where you stand. You don't need NLC. Start organizing in your offices, organizing in your places of, where, you, where the beer parlor you go and drink, instead of just being a drunkard, start discussing serious issues and organizing yourselves there on how to put pressure on the people that are destroying this country. Don't play. I've told you, you have two choices. <laughs> yes, finish. Is it that you side with the people? Hmm? Or you are taken out by the people? Finish. That's our we. That's our option. And so, sorry, I'm very sorry to say, many of us, as uh, it looks like we want to be taken out by the people. That's what it looks like. It looks like we want to be taken out. <laughs> and I'm sorry for us. I'm really sorry. You know, 
Thank you very much for joining the live tonight. Everybody have a good time. Love you all.